right. Hello and welcome to our webinar today, DevSecOps meets GitOps. A few housekeeping items up front that I have. If you have any questions around Zoom, oops, apologies. If you have any questions around Zoom, please look into the chat. There is a um, help link that will help you out. And we will be running a quick giveaway today. So please tweet at us during the webinar. Tweet at Twistlock team and we've works with the hashtag GitOps giveaway. And we'll have a couple of awesome socks for you guys to win to keep your feet warm for those colder days approaching. So it's my pleasure today to introduce our speakers. We have Keith Morcris from Twistlock as well as Stefan Prodan here from WeaveWorks. Twistlock is the most complete container security platform for teams using Docker, Kubernetes, and other cloud-native technologies. Twistlock also integrates with any CI tool and registry and runs wherever you choose to run your VMs, containers, and cloud-native. Keith leads the product marketing team at Twistlock, and he tells a story around how enterprises can leverage the Twistlock cloud-native cybersecurity platform to secure modern applications. Previously, Keith was in charge of product marketing at NowSecure, helping enterprises integrate mobile application security testing into their development pipelines and isolate critical vulnerabilities via penetration testing. In his free time, he likes landscapes and street photography. And then a quick note about us here at WeaveWorks. WeaveWorks makes it fast and simple for developers and DevOps teams to build and operate powerful containerized applications. The Weave Cloud Operations as a Service platform provides a continuous delivery pipeline for building and operating applications, letting teams connect, monitor, and manage microservices and containers on any server or public cloud. Stefan is a developer experience engineer here at WeaveWorks. He previously worked as a software architect and a DevOps consultant, helping companies embrace DevOps and the SRE movement. Stefan has over 15 years of experience with software development, and he enjoys programming in Go and writing about distributed systems. So let's get us all started. Keith, um, are you ready? I am. Thanks for having me. Perfect. I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to you. Awesome. I'm going to start here with a couple of slides uh, and then ultimately lead into a demo later on in today's presentation. And I just want to share that we're thrilled to be a partner uh, with Weaveworks, uh, you know, talking about how you can build a really awesome container development pipeline and where DevOps meets GitOps. One of the things I like to share just to kind of set a framework around uh, not only just DevOps and that it's important today, but really why integrating security into that process is so important and how we work with customers to provide that. Uh, one of the, the opportunities that you have is really to provide uh, more upfront visibility uh, into that process. And so that visibility is really important to you. Um, so you know exactly what's in your images and where risk is introduced as part of your pipelines. Deploying higher quality code uh, by setting quality gates throughout the process provides tremendous benefits, and that really prevents uh, the need to fix security incidents in production. Uh, there's higher costs associated with fixing something once a flaw has been released into production, as well as the cost associated with data breaches, security issues, or compliance violations. And so securing your pipeline in an automated fashion it provides tremendous benefits. I'd like to use this kind of high level framework to talk about the steps and tools involved with building, shipping, and running containers. Um, anyone, I'm guessing we have a lot of developers and DevOps folks in the audience today, so they're very familiar with what goes into a Docker file and the process of building that Docker file and then ultimately uh, sending that uh, image to a registry. Uh, and ship really involves a couple of processes. There's the CI process where you build um, build that image and ship it to your, uh, send it to your registry. And then when it comes to shipping, you're really looking uh, at continuous development leaders like Weaveworks, who have really pioneered this idea of continuous deployment, uh, continuous delivery, so you can ship high quality code and then ultimately you know, run that wherever you'd like in your own data center or various cloud services. So knowing the source and content of your images is paramount. And so I like to ask a couple of these questions for people who are building their images and running them. 
Uh, do you know where your containers come from? Uh, who built them? Who's maintained them? And you know, what packages are included? Um, what, what's the source of your images and libraries? Uh, are you using any third-party code uh, that may be outdated or vulnerable? And ultimately, removing vulnerabilities from your containers is paramount. So um, you, know, you have a container image that's built on top of a base image, which itself is built on other base images. And developers may grab a base image and other layers from public or third-party sources. In my demo later, uh, I have an example where I essentially love to grab GitHub tutorials, build those images and scan them. And oftentimes those uh, tutorials might be outdated or provide a lot of, uh, present a lot of risk if I were to use that application in an enterprise environment. Uh, so it just shows how you know, the internet, while it's a wealth of tutorials, you know, presents some risk if you're just grabbing things without scanning them. And this is one of those examples. And so I you know, essentially used a simple hello node image from a GitHub tutorial. Uh, and upon scanning it, it's a pretty outdated image that has almost 300 high risk vulnerabilities and 900 medium vulnerabilities. <clears throat> so this is an example of an image that you probably would not want um, being a part of your pipeline built on outdated base images. And again, I'll talk more about this in a demo later but it just shows how you can, there can be a lot of risk presence there. Another thing that goes hand in hand with um, DevSecOps is not just integrating security, but also this idea of hardening your image containers, daemons, or hosts, uh, using um, essentially the Docker and Kubernetes CIS benchmarks. The more of these checks that you can automate, the better. So for example, I like to share some of the example checks that are really important. Uh, not mounting sensitive host system directories on containers, only opening uh, needed ports on a container, uh, and then only allowing trusted users to control the Docker daemon, ensuring that you don't allow secrets to be exposed in clear text environment variables. These are just four of the 200 plus CIS uh, checks that you can automate with Twistlock as well as a handful of uh, you know, some open source tooling but making sure that you integrate that into your build process is also really important. One of the things that I'll be showing in my demo today and sharing is how you can integrate security into your CI CD pipeline. Um, and this is really one of the best places to detect and fix security vulnerabilities during this uh, development uh, deployment process. So if you can uh, essentially integrate a scan uh, whenever a new image is constructed, publishing those results within your native tooling, uh, you can essentially then fail a build or get visibility uh, into any sort of security vulnerabilities early in the process. Keith, I'm yeah. really sorry. I have to stop you for a second. Um, folks having problems with seeing the slides? Um, hold on for one second, please. Oh, yeah, no I'm problem. We have a very active chat right now, so I'm trying to see... Um, it seems like folks need to restart Zoom in order to see the slides, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, no problem. So let me see. Um, folks are rejoining now. Okay, let's give it a couple of minutes. Seems to be some technical difficulties. And I just mentioned we're going to share the slides in the recording after the um, webinar as well, so everybody can definitely have those. Okay, let's see. Okay, it seems like folks are coming back on and seeing things. So, sorry about the interruption. Let's go ahead and um, continue, please. Okay, yeah, I apologize for that. We'll be sure to share these slides. And ultimately, I'm going to be kind of demoing some of these capabilities in a minute. Um, and confidential really just means it's kind of like our copyright when it comes to Twistlock. So thanks for calling that out. Um, this is the, the essential demo I'm going to be showing integrating with Jenkins. Uh, Twistlock provides a standalone Jenkins plugin. So you can scan as part of every build. Uh, here's the blue ocean view, uh, but you can certainly use kind of the native Jenkins view if you prefer. But one of the things I'll be showing essentially is what Twistlock surfaces when it comes to the specific CVEs, packages, versions, severity, and then most important status. So if we can identify a fix, you can act on that as part of your CI process. So potentially failing a build, if there's a critical vulnerability, 
uh, with a known vendor fix, that's the type of information that we want to surface to everyone. Then a couple other things that we'll be highlighting um, are our capabilities around the ability to continuously monitor your containers, images, hosts, and registry with uh, the tool that we call Twistlock Vulnerability Explorer. And this is where prioritization becomes essential in your running environment, as well as providing powerful contextual data about configuration issues or risk factors. So for example, a container that has a high risk flaw, but also has listening ports, or doesn't have a security profile applied, as well as a vulnerability that might involve remote code execution, becomes a much higher risk than something that doesn't. And that's something that we surface. Another thing that we'll talk about is anomaly detection and threat defense when it comes to containers at runtime. And so Twistlock is deployed as an agent uh, on your underlying host and essentially models all of the containers uh, and network traffic and other components in your environment. And ultimately this provides a powerful model to whitelist container behavior and prevent anything anomalous as well as various threat scenarios. And again, automating this process as well as enforcement really helps you scale security at runtime. And these are some of the different layers that I'll showcase in my demo on the next slide. But one of those notions that we really emphasize is this idea of defense in depth. So we allow you to deploy a layer seven firewall to any specific container in your environment to prevent modern network attacks. Uh, what we call runtime defense, where we autom automatically create a whitelist based model for each image container and host provides another powerful layer of security. And then what we call our cloud native network firewall identifies traffic flows between containers um, to essentially isolate pod to pod traffic alert or block anomalous activity. See, I'm gonna like exit my full screen here and I'll hop on over to my Chrome window. Everyone should be able to see my Chrome window now. Um, let me know if you have any issues seeing that. I'm trying to figure out too how to successfully toggle over to the chat. Uh, so I've got a couple different windows open here. Um, and so one of the things I really want to emphasize here um, is this essentially kind of Visio that Twistlock provides. And we uh, use the Sock Shop application from Weaveworks every single day. Uh, if you haven't used it, it's an absolutely phenomenal demo application. Uh, our entire team has nothing but great things to say about it. And this is where you can see my running environment. Looks like someone's seeing a black screen. I hope that's not the case. So I can see fine. Let's make sure anybody else having problems. No, folks can see okay. it, it seems like. A couple of people still having some problems reconnecting. Okay. But most of them seem to work fine. Okay, please right. carry on, thank you. So again, we wanna highlight the you know, Weaveworks demo application that we like to use. And before I would ever go and actually deploy an application, I wanna walk you through some of the steps that I talked about earlier. So this is an example Jenkins view where I've uh, scanned a handful of different images and I can hop into a specific build and I can see that one of these images that I pulled down from a GitHub tutorial has a lot of vulnerabilities. And this is an example where this is an image that you would never really want to enter your environment. Twistlock allows you to hop in and see, uh, you know, what high, medium or low risk vulnerabilities might be present as well as powerful data about whether uh, these vulnerabilities are open or contain a vendor fix with, uh, you know, a summary about that specific vulnerability. As I mentioned earlier, we can surface this in like a blue ocean view, uh, which I think is a really great way to view this data as well. And we can surface that same information. And tying this back into Twistlock's dashboard, I can actually hop over and look at all the vulnerabilities in my environment down to any of those individual scans. So I can find that exact same image. I can view every image that's entering my environment and easily hop through and see that those open uh, risk issues as well as others that may have a vendor fix available. 
Um, and again, this is an example of an image that you would really never want to enter your environment. You would want to fix this much earlier in your application pipeline. This is an example of where Twistlock is going to stack rank all of the vulnerabilities in your running environment. And I can click into any vulnerability to see corresponding risk factors and contextual data. Uh, we'll see, for example, that this vulnerability uh, has, you know, this container has listening ports, the container's running as root without a security profile. And most importantly, this high risk vulnerability does have a vendor fix. Uh, and so, for example, fixing this one because it's so high, you know, would be one that you would prioritize taking care of as soon as possible. And before we go and I turn it over to Stefan, I just want to highlight the Visio that we provide with that vulnerability and compliance data. So for example, I can see all the different microservices in my environment, how they um, you know, can communicate one another, including the network traffic that we would isolate, as well as the fact that I've deployed a um, layer seven firewall to my front end microservice. Let's see, we have a question here. Yeah, so we can force users to uh, scan images as part of their Jenkins job. So we just add a specific build step, um, either through the Jenkins file or through your script. And so we'll scan every image if you'd like, as well as the ability to set thresholds as part of those scans. It's a good question. And I think that really ends my presentation today. Um, I'm thrilled you know, to be turning things over to Stefan here to talk about Weave Cloud. Uh, we're thrilled to be on this webinar. Thanks for everyone for sticking through all the little hiccups. Thanks, Keith. Everybody can see my screen? Uh, I can. Let's give it a second. Um, if we see in the chat window, just want to make sure that folks see it. Got a couple of yeses. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, working with us on this. Stefan, take it away. Thank you. Thanks. So <clears throat> Keith has talked about how Twistlock can secure the continuous integration pipeline. I will be talking about secure the continuous deployment one. And um, I will be showing you how we can do that with, with Cloud. With Cloud is our um, SaaS product. Um, it implements the GitOps op operating model. What is GitOps? I'll, I'll get into details uh, on the next slide. Um, the with Cloud is built around uh, three pillars. Um, deploy, observe, and control of your Kubernetes clusters. And when I mean Kubernetes cluster, it's not about um, just creating a cluster, it's about running workloads on them and deploying them, observing what's happening there and have control and be able to react on um, what your workloads are doing. Um, one thing I want to mention is that um, with cloud can be integrated with any validated Kubernetes installer or any kind of hosted uh, Kubernetes service like GKE, AKS, COPS, or ma many others out there. These are the three pillars of GitOps. So GitOps is, implies having an integrated pipeline where there should be as little friction as possible from the source code being committed to the code being deployed to your production cluster. Um, another pillar is observability and observability um, is a concept um, where you should have by all times have the ability to observe what is happening in your cluster. From the health of your systems to what Kubernetes is doing, load balancers, etc. And finally, control is, is the counterpart of observability. So is the ability to react to what you observe is happening in your cluster. What adopting GitOps means? So when your company adopts GitOps, um, it should be an easy adoption because all your developers are used to Git. Your operating, operational uh, team can have the same workflow, create issues, reviews, pull requests, um, 
Any operational change can be made by pull requests. You can roll back uh, any kind of change you, you made in your cluster using Git. And on top of that, you get observability and monitoring for all these changes. Of course, Git provides you an audited log of everything that happens uh, in a Git repo. What that means if you apply this principle to your uh, Kubernetes cluster is that using the Git audit log, you can actually have all, all your uh, cluster changes tracked in Git outside of Kubernetes. Of course, you can use Kubernetes events and stuff like that, its own audit log, but uh, Git can also provide this, uh, this great feature. Um, in order to talk about CICD, I will, I will start by showing you the typical CICD pipeline that um, most people are using right now. So your dev team will push co code into a code repo. Let's say you're, you have one microservice repo and in that repo, you bundle your application code along with um, deployment YAMLs or a Helm chart or something that defines how your application will run in your cluster. So you bundle these two. Uh, when you push that code, your continuous integration uh, tool will uh, kick off. We'll run some tests, we'll build the, the image, and afterwards we'll push the image to the container registry. Um, here is a, a boundary from the CI um, tooling to the container registry where, for example, Twizlock can protect you, right? From container registry to the cluster API, how you ship your uh, new versions, your um, Docker images inside the cluster, Typically your CI pipeline has some kind of dev script or some kind of way of talking to the cluster API and we'll apply those changes. So the typical CI CD pipeline has some um, security problems. First of all, um, for the CI to apply the changes to a cluster, you have to share your API credentials with the CI tooling. Um, what that means is that your CI tool becomes the, uh, a high value target, right? If someone breaks in your CI tooling, they have total control of your production cluster. Even if let's say your production cluster is highly secure, you still need to share this credential outside of the cluster boundary. Also, um, in this approach, um, your CI tooling um, will push images to the cluster, will create these new kind of deployments, but let's say your cluster goes down, you create a new cluster, what you have to do to restore the previous state of the cluster, you basically have to run all your CI jobs, rebuild everything, and apply all the workloads again to the new cluster. So, the usual CI pipeline doesn't have a, doesn't have its state recorded somewhere. It's in, I don't know, the Jenkins logs or whatever. So this is the typical CI CD pipeline. Let's see how we can improve it. Um, this is how a GitOps pipeline looks like. If you see um, the first, the first change we did was around the code repo. So we extracted uh, the deployment definitions from the code repos and we create a new repo, a config repo, when we store all the, uh, all these deployment files, can be hand charts, stateful sets, deployments, whatever. So GitOps implies first change, like you'll, you'll pull off all your um, YAMLs from your source code uh, and you create this config repo that will be the desired state of your cluster. This is the first change. The second change is your CI system doesn't need uh, cluster access anymore. The tool of the CI system will be just to um, build, test, run uh, locally, and afterwards push the container image uh, to the registry, and that's it. From there, we have a deploy agent that runs inside your cluster that has your cluster API keys mounted inside its pod. 
it talks to the configure repo, detects changes in the cluster state and applies those changes. So this is how GitOps improves from a typical CICD pipeline, you can go to this. So you don't need to share uh, your API keys outside of the boundary uh, and uh, the, the deploy engine only needs it's read only access to the container registry and rewrite access to the configurable. So based on what I've said before, we can extract two CACD anti-patterns. One will be that um, if your handcrafted CACD pipelines require the cluster API endpoint to be exposed to the internet, um, that's an anti-pattern, right? You don't want to have that kind of exposure. And uh, another anti-pattern would be if you are doing deployments with the CI and the CI has no way of recording the change, then um, when disaster strike, it will be very hard for you to, to restore that uh, the last known uh, good uh, state of your cluster. So GitOps means a separation of concerns between the CA tooling and the CD tooling. I, I talked about this, just uh, uh, an overview of them. Um, now, in here, uh, I've shown you that inside the cluster, uh, inside your production cluster or whatever cluster you have, uh, you'll be running a deploy engine. An agent. This uh, agent is part of the WeaveCloud installer. So WeaveCloud is a SaaS product that runs uh, on our own infrastructure. Uh, how you can connect the cluster, your own cluster to the Weave Cloud, you'll install um, a series of Weave Cloud agents. One of those agents is the deploy agent. Uh, the deploy agent is open source, you can check it on GitHub. Um, and by using the uh, Weave Cloud deploy, you keep your secrets close, don't expose the cluster API endpoint out, outside of your. Um, uh, private uh, uh, VPC. Uh, you can record every change in Git, and with Cloud will alert you on unexpected changes to the cluster. So, and let's say you define your state in Git, you synchronize that state with your cluster. With Cloud will do this automatically, and afterwards someone goes in into your cluster and does some harmful change like. Let's say it it will um, change the, your network policies. With Cloud can detect that and reapply the known state from Git. So every kind of change that, let's say, by mistake you'll be doing in your uh, in your production cluster will be undo, undone. Um, With Cloud deploy is implemented as a GitOps operator, so. Um, it's a Kubernetes operator that runs inside your cluster and implements a control group. This control group applies what's, uh, what's in Git with your cluster state. And it does that um, every five minutes. And of course, it offers protection against harmful actions, like I said before, a network policy altering, maybe someone deletes a whole deployment or uninstalls a, um, a Helm release. Uh, with cloud will detect all that and uh, will restore uh, will restore the state. Um, we also have a Helm operator, so it's an uh, extension to the with cloud deploy, and uh, it can you can automate um, Helm chart releases with it. This is how um, automation looks like for native uh, Kubernetes types. Let's say your um, dev uh, development team commits changes to your code uh, code repo, some microservice, some microservice. That microservice uh, gets built in the CI, gets pushed into the Docker registry. From there, the deployment agent agent could could detect that a new version of your microservices uh, of your microservice uh, is in the Docker registry. It can pull that version into your cluster, it can upgrade your uh, running version and synchronize that change with the uh, cluster repository where you define your state. 
or your operator, some someone from the operation team can do that change manually inside the Git repo. And uh, by doing a Git push, with Cloud Angel will detect that and will apply it. So uh, in a way, it's a, uh, it's a two-way synchronization. Um, when you when you want to automate the uh, the pipeline, you'll basically define some uh, continuous deployment uh, policies, and you can say, "I want to automate my deployment uh, based on Semver only for patch releases or stuff like that." I, I will show you in a demo how how all this works. Uh, every change that the deploy engine does to your cluster, or any kind of change that happens in your cluster that and the deployment agent discovers and undoes that change, any kind of change will be reported to Weave Cloud where you can see it and Weave Cloud from there using uh, Prometheus Alert Manager can push all these alerts to email, Slack, um, and other, other uh, SRE tools like uh, PagerDuty, for example. In the same way, we can uh, automate uh, uh, Helm release it works the same, but instead of committing uh, uh, deployment YAMLs, you will be committing a, a, a custom resource that uh, defines a hand release. Uh, the deploy agent will uh, will detect a custom resource of type uh, Helm release inside your Git repo. Will apply that on your on the cluster, and from there, another component called the Helm operator will. Um, materialize that custom resource into a Helm, uh, Helm release by talking to Tiller. So we covered um, Kubernetes native types, Helm charts, but what about secrets? So um, any kind of stateful set, any kind of application needs some secrets, right? You have a database, you have some database passwords, um, API keys, and so on. Your application, uh, your applications will depend on it. But you cannot store these, all these secrets in clear in, uh, in a Git repo. So one way to protect your secrets will be to use a uh, um, seal secrets controller made by uh, Bindami. And um, it's, it's an open source tool. Uh, what this control does when you install it for uh, first time when you install it in your cluster it will create a, a, a private key and a public key uh, you can take that private key and uh, store it safely somewhere uh, make a backup out of it uh, and using the public key you can encrypt uh, kubernetes secrets in into sealed secrets and those can be safely stored in even in, in a public Git repo because nobody can uh, decrypt those secrets except the seal secrets controller that's running inside your cluster. So um, when you uh, commit a seal secret to the Git repo, uh, the deploy agent will uh, synchronize the seal secret with your cluster. The seal secret controller will uh, decrypt that secret uh, and will mount that secret inside your uh, workloads. And this is how you can, you can do secret management the GitOps way. Okay, time for a GitOps demo. So, okay. One second, I have to move windows around. So, <clears throat> I have a cluster running on GKE. This is how Weave Cloud uh, looks. This is the overview of your, uh, of your uh, cluster. It, it tells you how many nodes, pods, how many containers are running, what's the overall CPU usage, memory usage, and so on. Um, so, First, I've connected my uh, uh, my Weave Cloud instance with the GKE cluster, and um, the second step, uh, as the second step, I've connected my Weave Cloud instance to a Git repo. And you can see here in the deploy window, I've configured um, uh, my GitHub repo on a specific branch, and I'm telling the Weave Cloud deploy agent this is where uh, the cluster state is defined. Um, 
and I'm running an application. These are, this is Safari. I've opened my application in Safari and in uh, Chrome. Um, the application will write the current version is ra it runs. So you can see that both uh, sessions are on the V1 version. Uh, how I've deployed this application is by creating a Git repo and inside this Git repo, I have this kind of structure. Um, I have my charts defined here, my namespaces and my releases. One of the releases is this app, which is called Frontend. And I'll make this bigger. And right now I, I have a single deployment called Blue. It has two replicas and the image that uses is my application version 1.0. Um, what I want to do next, I want to um, create um, um, A-B testing and I want to um, deploy my, one, my version 1.2 and I want to route only the traffic coming from the Safari uh, web browser to it. So um, how I can do that, I can edit this file. So the routing is done with the uh, uh, with the, with Istio. So what I, I'm going to do, I will enable this new uh, version. I will say, okay, my green version should have two replicas and I will commit this change. Usually if you are going to do that on a production cluster, you should go through a, um, a PR workflow, right? You should uh, create a pull request. Your operation team should approve this uh, change and afterwards uh, committed to to this branch. So I committed this change. Two replicas for the green. With Cloud has detected that uh, there was a change in my in my Git repo and it notifies me that. Um, there is some change it, and it will apply it on the cluster. It already applied it. You can see my uh, my Safari browser right now um, is on the version 1.2 and um, all the other uh, browsers will be routed to version one. So one aspect of uh, of GitOps is not only synchronization, is also uh, having the ability to observe what's, what's going on in your cluster. So besides this event stream, what I can do, I can go to Explore, for example, and here I can see that I'm running Istio, how all the Istio components are, are connected. And I can also look at my, um, uh, look at my demo namespace where I've deployed the, um, the, the front end app. And I can see there are two versions running right now, front end green and front end blue. Also, I can do, uh, I can do monitoring on it. So one component of the with cloud agents is Prometheus. Inside your cluster, you'll be running a Prometheus without any kind of storage. And uh, that Prometheus forwarder will send to with cloud all your, uh, all your metrics inside your cluster. And this is how we can build all these dashboards for you. We offer uh, 30 months of, uh, uh, of storage. So what you can notice on this graph, here are all my workloads that are running in my uh, demo namespace. And you can see here that with Cloud told me, this is the point where I've synchronized um, what uh, the Git repo. And you can actually see that from here on, uh, we have some changes. There wasn't uh, a front end uh, green before, now this one, and you can actually compare um, the CPU usage, the memory usage, and so on, all these metrics between the two versions that you are now running inside your cluster. Okay, let's say, so I have this setup right now. I have um, the green version and the blue version. Uh, what if I want to automate? For example, let's say I want to ship patches to my, to my green version and I don't want to go into Git and modify all the time this version. 
I've already pushed to Quay a new version of my application, 1.2.1. I want to show you how you can uh, automate this. So we can go into deploy. From here, I can filter and go to my front end uh, hand release. And here you can see there is a new version. I can click on it, I can do a manual release from there, but instead of doing that, I will create an automation of, of this uh, hand chart. And I, I will click automate. And what will happen now? <clears throat> so I modified the deployment policy. Um, this uh, modification was committed to Git. Now the the deploy agent will start uh, scanning the uh, the Docker registry and detect if it needs to deploy a new version of my uh, of my grid. So now it has committed the change, and if you see here the last. Um, said automate release of new image. And uh, also my app detected that, that now it's running on a new version. So this is how you can automate uh, uh, deployments with, uh, with a GitOps approach with WebCloud. Uh, you can define uh, um, policies based on Semver and you can say, I will refresh this because if cloud just changed it. So automate it through, this is when I click the button and it has, that change has been committed to Git. And the second change was um, the deploy agent discovered there is a new image in, in my container registry, it changed that image, it committed to Git and afterwards it applied it. And it, you can actually see what's going on by looking at uh, the commit history. And here you can say here is when I click the button, I cut the commit, automate this uh, this workload, and afterwards it did an automatically release, automatically uh, upgrade of my uh, of my running application. So this is the automation part, and uh, I've talked about how you can uh, monitor things with uh, with cloud, how you can. Um, um, determine if, let's say, a kernel release has worked well or not. Is it in parameters? So here, let's say, I will search for the front end. WebCloud has detected that, okay, uh, the front end um, Helm release contains two workloads. One is blue and one is green. Let's go to the green one. And here I have uh, built-in dashboard. This is um, um, this shows me the request rate, error rate, and latency. And because this application is written in Go, it it can also um, um, show me um, the um, things like number of Go routines, memory, heap size, garbage collection, and so on. And with the monitor view, you can also create your uh, custom dashboards. And here, for example, because I'm using Istio, I've created a, a, a dashboard to compare the front end, the, the, uh, the two uh, versions of my front end. And I can see here every time I did some change and you can easily compare the blue and the green in terms of request rate, latency, error rate and so on. You can, uh, you can create a, a lot of dashboards here. And you can also uh, do other things based on the same uh, queries that you use for, uh, for dashboards. So this, is, this was my quick uh, demonstration of GitOps and observability around GitOps. Um, Perfect, thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you, I'll awesome. stop sharing. Perfect. So we're going to move over into Q&A. So um, we have a whole bunch of questions already actually in there. So um, let me turn on um, the videos for Stefan and Keith so you guys can actually see who we're talking to. So one second. That. Cool. 
All right, um, Keith, a couple of questions for you up front. Um, we had some twist talk questions around um, capability of scanning other layers besides the base layer of an image, as well as if you guys are supporting signing images that pass security and its security check. Sure, and Jeremy, thanks for these great questions. I realize uh, some of these will be included in the slides, so you might have missed them if you weren't able to see them earlier. But essentially, um, Twistlock is going to scan all of the components that make up your Docker file. So not only those base image layers, but everything else included. Uh, you, we actually offer a view where you can go line by line through that Docker file correlated to all the vulnerabilities that may be in your image. So we can get incredibly granular there. One of the things that I didn't highlight was we do offer a feature for the ability to use trusted images. So if you want to essentially isolate a point of origin like image ID or certain registry and correlate that to specific resources in your environment, uh, that's a powerful feature where you can essentially control uh, where developers can access certain images or allow them to move forward in your pipeline. Excellent, great. Um, and then I'll jump over um, for a couple of questions to um, Steve here, uh, Steve, um, Stefan here. So um, there was a question, do we need Weave Cloud to use GitOps? Um, no, you can use GitOps with uh, our open source tools, with other kind of tools. What Weave Cloud does is combines the GitOps principle with all the observability part because we also have Prometheus as a service and um, our um, deployment agent. These two combined, can have, you can have a better view of what's going on. Um, yeah. Fantastic, and then one more as a follow-up. There was a question around rollback. Um, you kind of showed how you actually release things, but what about rollbacks? So yeah, because any, any change is a git commit. If you roll back that git commit, the deployment agent will reapply the, the last state of your branch. So it's, uh, it's not different. For example, when I, I've clicked automated, that kind of change was, um, um, was, uh, was in a commit. So if I will roll back to commits, the, uh, the new image deploy and the automated uh, a git commit, you'll end up with version 1.1 like it was before. Great. So yeah, rollback is that easy. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, let's see, Keith, question for you. The CVE list changes over time. Do you have a solution to identify vulnerabilities on currently running apps that may have been deployed weeks ago? Yeah, that's a great question. And so we talked earlier about, you know, that build step being a powerful kind of first point of visibility and enforcement. But Twistlock is going to continuously monitor your running environment and correlate any updates in CVE status over time. So for example, if you've put in all the work to control your application pipeline and you deploy something today, uh, even a couple days or weeks from now, there might be a new vulnerability that's found and released. Uh, that's why we've invested heavily in our intelligence stream, which correlates lots of different vulnerability threat feeds. And that's where we can alert you to any change uh, by continuously monitoring your environment and as well as prioritize that risk. Excellent, thank you. Um, follow up some security questions actually for Stefan. Um, don't you have to share your Git credentials with Reef GitOps agent? How is this more or less secure than giving your CI pipeline permission to your cluster? Yeah, good point. So you have to share your Git credential with the Weave deploy agent, not Weave Cloud. So you own with the Weave deploy agent. It runs inside your cluster and um, the Git um, credential will be a Kubernetes secret mounted inside the pod. Um, that secret never leaves your cluster, so it doesn't go to Weave Cloud. Weave Cloud is just um, an interface for reporting, alerting, and so on, but it, it, you don't need to share anything with it. In terms of your um, uh, Kubernetes API keys, your Git credentials, or whatever. Um, also, I, I will jump to the next question. Uh, even, even if I, I used 
uh, GitHub today. Um, with Cloud works with any kind of Git server, even if the basic Git server that you can create with an Alpine image is not, uh, it doesn't uh, uh, relies on uh, web hooks or a specific Git implementation. If your Git server, uh, your Git server knows SSH, it will work with Web Cloud and you don't have to share your credentials with us. Fantastic, thank you. Um, there was one more question on that note, actually. How was the old pod deleted during the new pod deploy? Was it a recreate? It depends on what what's inside the, um, uh, the, the deployment uh, YAML. In my case, it was a rolling update with a max search of zero. So uh, it did a rolling update by creating one new pod, replacing the other one and so on. But um, with Cloud Deploy doesn't control at all how you roll your updates inside your cluster. How you can control that is with Kubernetes object, objects, right? You can have a deployment spec in there, you have a stateful spec, a daemon set or whatever. So you are in control of how a rolling update is happening. Uh, with Cloud, we'll just apply the state that you're declaring it, uh, nothing more. And we'll monitor it, of course, but that's about it. Okay, great. Um, and then I think we have one more question to wrap it up. Um, I know Stefan showed actually Istio with the GitOps model. Um, Keith, can you talk a little bit about, do you guys do something with Istio um, and what's the current um, integration piece with Twistlock there? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, ultimately, we have some Istio integration capabilities coming in our next release. Uh, so the ability to visualize the service mesh topology so being able to see some of that uh, traffic connectivity and then pro uh, providing some like service level control. Uh, we have a really great blog post that I can share after, uh, but Istio is something that we get asked about a lot. Awesome, thank you. All right, I think that was all the questions that I'm seeing right now. I'm gonna give it a couple of more minutes to see if somebody would like actually to share something more or had anything else that they would like to ask? All right, I don't see anything coming in. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you to all attendees working with us through some technical hip ups today for whatever reason. Um, if you um, could connect with me if you had issues to tell me what the problem was, that would be fantastic so we can eliminate this for the next time around. And then I really wanted to thank Stefan and Keith, of course, for doing their presentations today. And we will be happy to send out the recording as well as the slides after the fact. So thank you all very much and have a fantastic day. Bye, thank you. Thanks everyone.